It is important that we revere, hold high and respect the animals that we hunt. On social media, you, you see it all the time. You see a guy shoots a deer and now he's laying on the ground, hugging the deer, doing a selfie. The deer's tongue's hanging out, it's bleeding, its eyes are laid back in its head, it's dead. So the real question, is social media good for the hunting community? And I'd have to argue there's good and bad in everything. And what I'd like to remind everyone is be tasteful and most of all, be respectful. I mean, these animals made the ultimate sacrifice for us. The non-hunters see this on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on TikTok, on YouTube. It's disrespectful and it's irreverent. What a God-blessed morning. This is my favorite place on earth. <sighs> the adrenaline dump starts now. Right on the trail of the Yeah. You know, I started doing this about 20 years ago. And sometimes you get excited and, <clears throat> you know, you got to stop and remind yourself. But this isn't about religion, it's about respect, and it's about being thankful. So join me, would you? Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for this wonderful gift. May this buck's body nourish our bodies, and may his memory nourish our souls. And this we pray through Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome day. It is important that we revere, hold high and respect the animals that we hunt. Now has that outlook changed over the years? Maybe with the invent of social media? On social media, you, you see it all the time. You, the, the ones that I find most perplexing, I guess is the best word. You see a guy shoots a deer and now he's laying on the ground, hugging the deer, doing a selfie. Deer's tongue's hanging out, it's bleeding, its eyes are laid back in its head. It's dead. It's disrespectful and it's irreverent. There are some bad things on, on social media and, and I could probably just uh, write volumes on that or speak hours on it. But in the social media world, you gotta think some good's there. Sure, there's anti-hunters following these us, uh, big social media uh, influencers and they're, they're all over them. There's some bullying going on, lots of jealousy, I know that. But set all that aside, this social media world is exposing a whole new group, a whole universe, people all over the world hunting. The way I look at this is you are a representative of this community. And as, in the hunting community, we know this is a small community worldwide. And everything that we do is on a stage now. And it's being watched by everyone. Whether you like that or not, that's reality. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by...
Oh, he's got way more stuff than I thought he'd have. Mass. He's got a kicker up here on his G2. He's got two kickers and bladed up here. Nice forks. You know, like I said, what makes this buck so special to me is the fact that I put my time in scouting. I come out of the high country. I've been archery hunting elk. Came down, been fighting some snow, high winds. Got on this buck the first morning I watched him through the spawn scope and then for several consecutive days put the pattern together and it was right here on this mesa that I figured I'd be able to put the ambush together. And that's exactly what we did. Lead by example. So instead of going head to head with some of these guys, and, and maybe it doesn't hurt once in a while just to say, hey, hey Bob, I'd like to see a smile on a photo or, or something else, but do it right when you show your harvest, when you show yourself in the field, when you show yourself outdoors, smile. Show some good things about the hunt. Show some great things about the hunt. Share really solid quality information and imagery of what hunting's all about. Lead by example, and maybe, just maybe, some of that will rub off on some of these folks that are possibly leading us in the wrong direction down the social media road. Hi, I'm Brad Fenson, back here in Oklahoma, one of my favorite places to hunt white-tailed deer. So I was fortunate this year to hunt the firearm season earlier, and I'm back out here December to hunt the archery season. Of course, it runs into January. We're hunting with Rut and Strut Guide Service, and it's really important to pay attention to the name. Guide Service means he helps you. He's got places set up, stands, blinds, and stuff where you hunt, but you don't have to take a full package. You know, um, there is a, a place to stay here but it's more of a guide service than a full outfitted hunt. So uh, things to pay attention to when you're looking to hunt in different places, a very personal place. You normally come in as a hunting guest and you leave like family. So it's a wonderful place to come. And I think that's what the hunting community is always looking for, some place where you feel at home, where there's a good chance of shooting a really good deer, and you see lots of wildlife. We're at the tail end of the rut right now, and the other day we were out hunting, we had the new 10 point Nitro 505, the fastest production crossbow on the market today, and we had a wonderful hunt. An hour after Legal Light, we had a doe show up. She came out, fed in the winter wheat, went out, uh, actually with the drought going on here, she headed right to the center of the field. There was a bit of a depression and that low area held a little bit more moisture where that deer went and found a little bit more succulent and a little bit more density of the winter wheat. And it was interesting to pay attention to that. You know, hunters that are looking for a key setup spot, especially for bow hunters, that little depression in the field would have been critical to pay attention to, to know where to put a blind or a stand or something to focus in on the deer when they did show up in the field. You know, instead of picking one entry point, you know where they're gonna go to eat their groceries. Then we had that beautiful nine show up. Nice deer, again, we could hear some commotion behind us. Deer were grunting, the doe's running around, you could hear it in the, in the dry vegetation. Today is a special day for me. You can tell I'm still shaking a little bit because that big buck came in, but 
This is the first time I've ever shot the 10 point Nitro 505. And I'll say during daylight hours, I got to camp last night. We sighted in in the headlights. This thing is a tack driver. Shooting 505 feet per second, you could hear that arrow go through this deer here in front of us. It was insane. Like, it goes so fast, it's just, it's like shooting lightning bolts. I think the only one that didn't like it this morning was that deer, but he's a great Oklahoma buck. You know, that those tall tines and that white antlers, they really stuck out and stood out in the sun. So, it's a big day for me. New 10 point, first buck with it. beautiful deer. These deer are a little dainty compared to what I'm used to in Canada, but it never gets old. I love hunting whitetails anywhere they are, and uh, this deer did not travel more than 50 yards from where I shot him, so everything worked well. The crossbow was outstanding. Of course, those several broadheads, I've come to consider them my confidence broadhead. I've shot so many things with them, and again, I was peeking out of the corner of the blind to watch this fellow go down, but what a great Oklahoma deer. Look at that. Slick and easy. And look at the rotation on those cams. The full 404 degrees of deer stopper. You know, on social media, lots of hunters post pictures of their game. And what I'd like to remind everyone is be tasteful and most of all, be respectful. I mean, these animals made the ultimate S sa sacrifice for us. You can see where the animal was shot by the arrow. I put a bow over it just to cover it up. The other thing I do is I often bring a, a broom or those that live in the north might have some uh, a snow brush, but clean them up, make them look good, respectful. If there's blood on the face and stuff, you can use wipes. Windex works wonders for eliminating blood off the hair and also gives it a little bit of a shine, but you can Clean up their nose, make sure that they're, they look as good as they did when they were alive, if possible. If you're uh, taking photographs at night or with a flash, you can actually buy eyes from a taxidermy supply house. And you want the ones that are concaved in the back and they just slide right in so that you can actually make that deer look alive again like that. You get no flash off the eyeball. And then just be very tasteful, set them up. One of my favorite shots with any type of antlered game is to find a bit of a rise and make sure you can skyline those antlers against that blue sky. It really shows off the gear that he has and the equipment, all the points. And of course you can turn it different directions to, to make sure you get their best side. So if you're successful in the field, please be respectful to the game we harvest. Don't sit on them, clean them up, take the best photos possible and it'll look better for the deer and for you as a hunter. We're not all perfect. You know, we, we do things in life, no matter what vocation or what paths we go down. We do things that we're not proud of. But when you do something you're not proud of and you realize it, you usually correct for it. And if you can rein in your fellow hunters Say, hey, come on, man, you know, yeah, that was all funny when you did it, maybe, I don't know, but um, don't post that on social. And there's nothing wrong with deleting stuff either. I've done it. Post something, I should have said that was stupid, that was mean, um, you know. I've got a, a little note on my computer. It's on a post-it note, don't react. It's all about getting reactions. And um, I, think, I think we're above it and we're beyond it. Several broadheads have been around for a little over four years, and a lot of archers might not know that there's some huge technological advantages to this mechanical broadhead. It's not your average mechanical. No, I love these. I've loved the rear deploy because you get the big cuts. It doesn't take any energy to open them really to speak of. 
The other thing we've added here with the sever is this locking pivoting feature. What's great about that is if that blade goes past a bone, it pivots, but still continues to cut. That's another thing that's unique about the sever is the locking pivoting blades. Another thing that's unique is this little hole right here. You can put a set screw. Every head comes with an extra one. You put that in there with the blades closed like yours is there, and you can actually go out and practice with the same head that you hunt with. What a confidence booster that is. It is huge. You know that's going to hit right where you're, right where you're uh, going to shoot because you're using the exact same head. And I love that. These blades are fully contained inside the ferrule, so they're accurate as all get out. So it's really got a lot going on. And confidence, you know how important that is for bow hunting. This is really a booster for that as well. If you haven't checked out the advantages, please go to severbroadheads.com. Let's talk about scent dispersal because a lot of times you might not think about scent dispersal as being a year-round thing. It should be because you can really increase your success rate while you're hunting and bring deer closer on your property no matter when you're out there. Think about it this way, three-tiered approach. Number one could be a scent drag, highly effective as we know when bucks are kind of feeling their oats in October and into November. That's right at the ground level. The second level would be at your waist level. That could be using a scent tripper, it could be spraying a curiosity scent, or it could be spraying an estrus scent as you're on your way to your hunting stand or at your hunting stand. The third level of this tiered system would be when you're up in your tree stand, and that would be atomizing your scent. Curiosity scent is awesome for using when you're up in your tree stand, especially early season. Early season bow hunting, you have something that's gonna peak a deer's curiosity. You wanna get that out there. You could just spritz out a spray every, you know, every 15 minutes or so. That's gonna get that scent out there. It's gonna carry it farther out where you're hunting, get it downwind, and deer are gonna investigate it. Or you can use it during the rut. You can atomize an ester spray, which I'm not gonna do it here today. But think about scent dispersal three different ways. Ground level, waist level, and then when you're up in your tree stand, you're gonna really increase the amount of scent you wanna to get to a deer, the good stuff, so he's gonna get close for a shot.